Hello and welcome to WMLT News. I'm Courtney Venatter. Police have finally charged a man in a machete robbery in the Caribbean island of Nevis. 20-year-old Neville Brown turned himself in on February 19th after he was declared a person of interest. The intruder robbed Supreme Court Justice Stephen Breyer while at his vacation home. Although Breyer nor his family were hurt, the male assailant fled the scene with over $1,000. Officials say that Brown was Justice Breyer's gardener and had no motive for wanting to harm Breyer. Brown's felony carries a maximum sentence of 20 years in prison. Although attacks on Supreme Court justice are rare, this is not the first. Other attacks include that of Justice Byron White in 1982 and Justice David Souter in 2004. WMLT's Richard Babbage attended an annual plunge into the Bluestone Lake hosted by one of the well-known national fraternities on Concord's campus. Students and alumni of Concord University, <laughs> okay. as well as EMTs, came out for Tall Cap Epsilon's annual polar bear plunge. I'm Mark Borromeo from Tall Cap Epsilon, and today we're going to go take a polar bear plunge. We raised a lot of money for this event. On our best day, we raised about $70, and on our worst day, I think we still raised Thursday. Uh, so that's five days of fundraising, so we have a lot of people to make crowd. Awfully cold out here, not looking forward to it, but we got to do what we got to do, what we promised. Tar Kappa Epsilon has hosted the annual event for nearly a decade. Members of the Greek community came out to show their support as this event annually raises over $250 for Alzheimer's research. Hi, I'm Rebecca Creel. Um, we're here today with Petiques for Polar Bear Plunge. Um, we're just really excited to get in. It's going to be super cold, I know, and ridiculous, but we're excited to raise money for Alzheimer's. So. This year, Talk Kappa Epsilon raised over $280. How long did you stay in there? Um, well, uh, longer than I intended because I uh, got stuck in the leaves down there, so I kind of got trampled, and then I ran out. Like that. Did you have a good time? Yes. <laughs> and the best way to get involved is to jump in. This is Richard Babbage reporting. New construction in Sandstone has begun. Here's Nathaniel Altair with more. The New River is a natural resource of West Virginia that brings outdoor enthusiasts from all over. And one of the most popular spots on the river is Sandstone Falls. The National Park Service has commenced on an effort to renovate the existing road to the falls known as River Road into a two-lane parkway that will increase tourism and connect many of the parks of southern West Virginia. Earlier this week, I talked to Doug Talbert, the National Park Service planning coordinator for the parkway, over the phone. Uh, you know, the New River Parkway is... Uh intended to be a two-lane, slow-speed touring parkway, uh, similar in concept to, to, say, the Blue Ridge Parkway. Though this could be a great resource to West Virginia, not everyone is excited about the parkway. We're going to lose a large chunk of our front yard, so it's probably just going to be like uh, my house, porch, about five feet of yard, and then road. So we're gonna we're gonna move. And uh, I don't know how much they're gonna offer us, but we're gonna have to move in about six months or they're gonna I don't know what they're gonna do, but we gotta be out of there by six months. Though the park service has said that the new road will follow closely the dimensions of the existing road, the exact properties of the new road are still being determined by division of highway engineers. However, the Park Service has been trying to make the road as uninvasive as possible for residents. Our parkway will be a mix of uh, private uh, and state and federal lands. You know, there'll be state parks, there'll be uh, the national park, but there'll also be private holdings as well. So, you know, we're trying to come up with a parkway concept that will work with uh, uh, all of those different groups. Construction of the first section of the road is scheduled to be completed by September 2013. For WMLT News, this has been Nathaniel Altair at Sandstone Falls. Authorities in Huntington believe that a recent string of fires were the result of arson. Up to 16 suspicious fires have occurred since December of 2011 throughout the town. 
While most of the fires occurred at abandoned homes, some have damaged Occupy res residencies. There were two fires on Saturday, February 18th alone. Investigators say that while they do believe that fires were purposeful, they do not believe that they were all caused by the same person. If you believe you have any possible information on the crimes, Leads are encouraged to call the West Virginia State Police at 304-746-2100. Now, here with this week's Concord Minute, Jared Klein. Thanks, Courtney. In organization news, the Concord Student Government Association appointed a new senator position to represent the Beckley campus. The newest senator, who is being called the Beckley Senator, will be the 14th senator to serve on the SGA and will be required to take a majority of their classes in Beckley. While supporters say that this new senator will provide representation for students that are not on the Athens campus, opponents argue that the position will be difficult to maintain. The person to serve this new position has yet to be determined. The Greeks have been out and about the past few weeks promoting their organizations. From loud music in the student center to graffiti sidewalks, each organization has many tricks up its sleeve to pull in new recruits. Concord University is home to a wide variety of both nationally and locally recognized fraternities and sororities that attract a wide variety of students. Finally, on a sad note, Concord University is suffering from a terrible loss. Lisa Blankenship, Concord's cheerleading coach and Delta Zeta sorority advisor, passed away on Sunday, February 12th. Blankenship worked at Concord since 1977 when she became assistant cheerleading coach. Blankenship will be missed by all at Concord. That's it for this week's Concord Minute. I'm Jared Klein, back to you at the desk. We'll return for more WMLT news in just a moment. Welcome back to WMLT News. A carbon monoxide leak has taken place at a hotel in Charleston, killing 44-year-old Rhode Island engineering contractor William Moran and leaving 17 other people injured. Carbon monoxide readings on the fifth floor were about 700 parts million, anything above 30 parts million, calls for concern. The cause of the leak began 11 years ago when the Holiday Inn Express in South Charleston, West Virginia, improperly installed a swimming pool heating unit in 2002. The pipe was further compressed during the unit replacement in December, causing a buildup of carbon monoxide. In California, a baker's man has been arrested for allegedly filleting cats and cooking them on his backyard barbecue. Jason Wilmerit has been arraigned on Friday of charges of alleging animal cruelty and using a pet for domestication animal for food. While both of these charges are misdemeanors, the Kern County public where Bakersfield is located is an outrage. Wilmert's neighbors told the Kern County Sheriff's Department they had heard many cats wailing throughout the day, and upon entering the house, the police found a carcass in his kitchen, sink as if prepped for cooking, an animal trap, and a cat head in the backyard. Wilmer has been unable to pay the 22500 bail for the animal cruelty charges and the unrelated littering offenses. It is still unclear if he has an attorney. And now, with this week's sports, here is Richard Babbage. Thanks, Courtney. It's almost time for the basketball postseason here at Concord University. Both the men's and women's teams are on a four-game winning streak heading into tomorrow's game against Wiviac rival University of Charleston. The Lady Lions won their recent game against Fairmont State after a last-second buzzer beater made by forward Jolisa Brown. With that win, the team is looking to win the Wiviac regular season title as they are currently tied for first place. The men's basketball team has made a strong push from 9th place to 6th place after their recent win against Fairmont State. Rommel Kemp led the team to victory as he scored 18 points in a few blocks in the win. He now moves up to having the 5th most blocks in the Wiviac Conference. In other Concord sports news, the Concord baseball and softball teams are ready to battle for the Wiviac championship titles as they begin their seasons. The baseball's team season started strong as they went against nationally ranked teams Wingate and Armstrong Atlantic University. Their next game will be against Notre Dame College in a doubleheader this Saturday on Concord's own Anderson Field. The softball team also started off strong as they went against perennial Division II powerhouse Lincoln Memorial University. They will also be playing in a doubleheader this Saturday at Shaw University in Raleigh, North Carolina. 
That's it for today's sports. The FDA plans to review a new fad that just hit the market late last month in New York and Massachusetts. AeroShot, a caffeine shot in a lipstick size tube, is planned to be the next big thing. Each tube costs $2.99 and can contains 100 milligrams of caffeine powder, about the same as a large cup of coffee and B vitamins. Though the product sports the warnings of not consuming more than three air shots per day, some speculate that young adults might use the shots to keep themselves awake while consuming alcohol. The fact that it will be breathable is what worries many students at Northeastern University sampled the product and their views were scattered. While some proclaimed their love for the product, others were of hard coffee drinkers. A New Hampshire man defending his home could be facing the same sentence as the burglar. Dennis Fleming of Farmington was arrested for reckless conduct after he returned home to his farmhouse and found 27-year-old Joseph Herbert climbing from a neighbor's window. After already, already burglarizing his home, Fleming fired the gun into the ground and held Herbert at gunpoint until, until police arrived. When police arrived on the scene, they made two arrests. Herbert was charged with two counts of burglary and drug possession and may face up to seven years in prison while Herbert is scheduled to be arraigned March 20th on one account of reckless conduct and could also face up to seven years if charged. Penny Dean, spokeswoman for the gun owner of New Hampshire, said, The fact that this man would be charged is an outrage. Burglars in New Hampshire must know it's open season. This is charging the victim of an in innocent Fleming said, didn't know it was illegal to fire into the ground. I've got a clean record. I really don't want to be convicted. County Attorney Tom Velarde will review the case and de determine if the charge was against Fleming, if appropriate, under the state status regarding self-defense. Scientists have discovered a never-before-seen type of planet. The world named G1214b is larger than Earth but smaller than Uranus. The scientists discovered this steamy water world enshrouded by a thick, steamy atmosphere. The planet is located 40 light-years from Earth. The world, which was first noticed in 2010, is said to be too hot to host in ter any terrestrial life as science currently de defines it. Zachary Berta, lead author of the Harvard-Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics, said that the high temperatures and high pressures would form exotic materials like hot ice and superfluid water substances that are completely alien to our everyday experience. That's all for WMLT News. I'm Courtney Venatter. Please tune in again in two weeks for more from Concord University.